Okay, okay, I'll give credit where credit is due. Looking back on Wolfsong, it isn't that bad of a story. In fact, it has its own charm, and I can understand why people like it. But like every other video I've released on the movie, I have to explain the things I can't stand, and the plot is definitely one of these. So without further delay, let's jump into it. First of all, the story is all over the place. When you look at the overarching plot, it makes enough sense. But we start having a problem with all of the extra tidbits of lore and information that has been sprinkled throughout the story. And sure, I was really young when I wrote this, and sure, I only had so much screen time to add in all the pieces I wanted to, but the problem really comes down to my own indecision. There were just too many things I wanted to do, and I wasn't able to make choices. So let's back up and look at the plot as a whole. We start out with Cerberus wanting to break out of hell to wreak havoc on the Earth, but he needs the pure of heart to do it. Unfortunately for him, she doesn't want to help because she's pure. Then we leak in a bunch of lore with the Stone of Souls and the Book of Legends. Before we can even explain what these three items are and what their significance is, we race to the surface world and defeat a group of elemental wolves that guard the Stone of Souls. This is only mentioned briefly and then we move on. Let me pause here for a minute because I have something really important to say. The story of the Hollowds was given the most unfair hand in the entire Wolfsong universe, and I will die on this hill. The Hollowds was such an interesting concept, and it was literally wasted on simple lore for the story. Honestly, what would have been way cooler is a movie centered just around the Hollowds, how they gathered, why they chose to protect the stone, and their struggles with guarding the most powerful relic in existence. That alone could be its own two-hour movie. What a waste. But it's fine, we'll give it three minutes of screen time to fester in Arrow's campfire story, and then we'll move on, because now this golden beauty needs to go save her brother. And hey, if she happens to find the Stone of Souls unguarded, well that's just a plus. I mean, you spent who knows how long finding the stone while killing off the most powerful wolves on the planet to get it. You might as well set it down in a random clearing where anyone could take it, right? Yeah, sure, that checks out in my head. Moving on, Alador dies, which is sad, but like, who's Alador again? Oh, yeah, Kara's brother. I mean, Kara looks sad, so this is probably sad, but then Kara passes out, which is fine considering the circumstances. Even though this is a lazy way of saying, hey Kara, take a break, other characters need to talk about you and you can't hear what's going on. Oh, and you should sleep through the bear attack while you're at it. Speaking of which, the pack soon runs into Afro Wolf. I guess he just couldn't stay away from the love of his life that long. He had to come find them and potentially ruin their plan to save Alador. Then he cuddles with her, which is so kawaii. And then there's a fox and then a bear? Wait, I thought we were trying to fight the Death Alpha. Where did this guy come from? Doesn't matter, they run away, straight into Old Man Damien. And then Arrow's like, wait, we're way stronger than bears, dumb bear. And then he goes back to fight the bear, simultaneously peer pressuring everyone to fight the bear too. And when people jump in to help, Damien gets severely wounded. Not sure how he didn't bleed to death at this point. They go back to the pack and inform everyone of their failure, but they also prevent the Stone of Souls. Kara gets yelled at for being sad about her brother being murdered a few hours ago, and then the pack peer pressures her into wearing the Stone of Souls, even though it's causing her literal torment. She turns into a monster wolf with wings for some reason, and the guys all proceed to call her hot. She trains in this new form, there's some unwarranted romance, cause don't forget kids, if you want love you should probably change your body to get it. Then the Death Alpha's daughters show up to kidnap Kara, the other potential pure of heart. Also, I have no idea how the Death Alpha's pack figured out Kara was the pure of heart. It happened off screen, probably went down like this. Cobalt, you idiot, you killed the pure of heart. No, Saya, you see, it was nothing but an apostle. Go on. Well, he, uh, you see, Mm, he has brothers and sisters, I mean, what wolf isn't born in a litter, right? And if they share the same blood, it's very possible that sibling is also a pure of heart. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what happened. Not only that, but they might be more willing to help us than the rot was. Mm, fine, go and find out, but take Mia and May. This time they're in charge, no more screw-ups for you, little mister. Anywho, the sisters show up and then, wait, who are you? You know, this would have been perfect for one of the other wolves in the original pack to get some character development, but instead I have this random white wolf with blue swirly show up to help out Kara. Needless to say, Kara fights the sisters and is able to defeat them with her new stone powers. Yeah, that's what we'll call them. Now, on top of being a monster, she gets all these other upgrades, like a great sense of hearing and speed and blah blah blah. They take her away, and then Cobalt and the other wolves show up, and the Death Alpha proceeds to torture her like they did with Alador. There's also this group of wolves that they held prisoner who were Arrow's parents. They get killed as a way to convince Kara to help them. Not sure how that would convince her, but whatever. So these characters were basically irrelevant from the beginning. There was really no point in even showing them. Damien takes his wounded body and recruits four other wolf packs because I'm sure he has the strength to do that with injuries like this. We also find out that one of the alphas is Damien's brother, and for some reason this is the first time in the story we've even heard of other wolf packs that the death alpha hasn't overthrown yet. Feels very convenient to have all this extra muscle at their disposal all of a sudden. Anywho, next Arrow shows up with an army after old shaming Damien. Arrow and the Death Alpha have a little back and forth as the Death Alpha says some hurtful things that he probably shouldn't know about, and then Arrow gets really mad and starts fighting the Death Alpha. Also, Kara has hand 
handcuffs, and no one ever talks about how weird that is. Like, tie her paws with a vine or something for Christ's sake. In fact, this would have been the perfect intro into Hartana being a shapeshifter. Hey Hartana, tie up Kara, would you? Yes, sir. Hartana, you you can shapeshift and you're with the Death Alpha? I thought you loved me. I thought you loved Damien. Even a baby wouldn't have fallen for that, idiot. Anyway, back to my synopsis. So Arrow is fighting the Death Alpha, and even though he's a hollowed, he gets defeated. And meanwhile, we learn about Arrow's training and the fact that when he activates his hollowed powers, he loses access to all of his emotions. Then he gets fatally injured. Kara gets mad and fights the Death Alpha, after it's too late to save Arrow. Until Damien enters the scene, mind-controlled. Kara kills him because it's the only way, and the Death Alpha runs away angry that his foolproof plan was foiled. For now. Mixed into this, we have May's mystery baby, the romance between Lightning and Reyna, Chance sexually harassing Melody, Zar's brother defeating Cobalt in battle, Cobalt running away with the best line ever in the whole movie. Cobalt out! I am outie! Lightning unable to kill Damien because he's basically his dad, Hartana and Kendon being traitors, and Hartana being a shapeshifter. It's just too much happening. We can't even focus because we keep getting ripped around. But honestly, it makes sense considering my ADHD brain came up with this stuff, but I digress. So in a nutshell, this happened, that happened, and then this happened. That's the plot. Not to mention there are too many characters for the amount of time I had. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There are too many characters in this movie and they didn't serve a purpose. They felt thrown into the story just to fill up space and make the pack feel full, which was a bad reason to add them. And while we're talking about wolf song characters, I'm proud to present an all new line of merch that just went live in my store. These new pieces feature all our favorite characters and their zodiac signs. So if you want to support the channel and purchase your personal zodiac, I would be very much in your debt and your favorite wolf song character will personally deliver homemade cupcakes to your house. It will 100% happen, I'm not lying. So if you're interested in a brand new super soft shirt that represents both you and your favorite character, now is the time because for the first 10 days, you can get any of these shirts with free shipping included. Just use the coupon code ZODIAC. Now, back to the video. Let me be real for a minute. This entire story had an agenda. Certain events needed to happen to pull everything together, even if the characters had no say in it, and we're just along for the ride. And that's the whole issue for me. It isn't written in a way that pulls emotion from the audience. Sure, 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 people cry when Alador, Arrow, or Damien die, but that isn't what I mean. A lot of things happen in Wolf Song, but there are only a few scenes that show the true impact. One of these is when Inora cries when she hears the news of Alador passing away. And this would have been more impactful if their relationship was shown more, but they spoke to each other like two or three times and then this happened. It was a good scene to show emotional impact, but it wasn't earned. And let's talk about the infamous annoying ending. We get left on a cliffhanger, which is fine, but since it does, now I have to come back in and write a second one, but there isn't any room for a sequel. With the characters written as they are, the end puts us in a bit of a corner. If we wanted to go the cliffhanger route, it's only fair for me to have a solid plan for what happens next, but... If I'm being honest, I don't. There are a lot of ways I could take it, but the way the first movie is written it leaves little to my own imagination, especially since the characters' actions at the end don't line up with, well, logic. For instance, why would the Death Alpha run away? He didn't seem too injured and he still had an army. It was almost like the plot said, okay bad guy, it's time for you to leave, but most of the main cast is dead. We have an advantage if we go in harder right now. Yeah, well that kind of goes against what I'm trying to do here. And this probably goes without saying, but the relationships feel forced. I'm not going to get into this now, but I do have a whole other video talking about wolf song relationships and why they don't work. Check it out if you want. So in conclusion, the overarching plot isn't that bad, but all the little details that went into it made the story worse off. If I redid the movie today, the plot would be simplified a lot, and all the little details would be built by the characters driving what happens next. It would feel a lot less like this happened, then this happened, and then that happened. And more like he felt like this, which made him act like that, which caused this impact, and then affected these people, and they reacted this way, etc. I don't think I explained that super well, but hopefully you get the idea. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my opinion. Also, be sure to like this video if you want to see more of my thoughts on Wolf Song. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be the first to watch my new videos. See you next time, Packmates.